Hello! In this video, I'm going to briefly show you around the Onshape Part Studio interface. Starting way up here in the corner, if you click on the giant Onshape logo here, it'll take you back to the main documents view that you get to when you first log in. We don't want to do that right now. Right next to that is the document menu where you can do some things like change the default units in the workspace some different things like that. We have the version controls right here to look at look through the version history and add a new version. I show you, showed you these real quick in the tissue box cover video. Next to that we see our parts name, or our document's name rather. You can click in there and change it if you want, like so. And this little icon here it shows up because I'm using an educational account. They want to make sure they keep track of which parts were created by people with education accounts because they want to charge you extra money if you want to use Onshape for commercial engineering work. Next to that, way over here, we have the comments area. And you can add little comments. You can have a discussion thread on a part file. This can be really useful if you're collaborating with your classmates. You can write in here. I think that's a good idea, right? And now the other people I've shared the document with can see that. And next to that is notifications. You'll see new uh, comments and stuff show up in there. Onshape has an app store, which we're probably not going to use very much, but people other than the Onshape company can make neat add-ons for Onshape to do fancy engineering things like simulations. We don't want to do that. There's a learning center, which has some other videos and other learning material. You're welcome to look through this if you want. It's taking a while to load for me here. But most of this stuff is meant for uh, professional engineers, a lot of whom already know basic CAD stuff. It's not really for people like us is what I'm getting at. There's a reason we're making these videos special for you. But you're welcome to look through this if you want to get back out of this. The share button is kind of important. This is where you could give access to your part to people in your class, class for example, in your group. So I'm going to see if I can give Nathan, the STEM Explorer coordinator, access to this part. There, no. Nathan will probably get an email that tells him I shared this part with him. And there's the help menu here, which this can be useful. It, some of it can be a little bit tersely written because, again, they're, they kind of mean this for professional engineers to look through. But you're welcome to read through that if you want to. And then you can manage your account and stuff from right here. And moving down, these two buttons are going to be your best friends in Onshape, undo and redo. If you ever make a mistake, you, there's infinite undo history, you can always undo it. And then if, even if you decide you didn't want to undo something, you can redo it, so that's really great. And the sketch button right next to that, we're all used to. And there's a whole bunch of different features after that on this toolbar here. I'm not going to explain all of them to you right now because we're never even going to use some of them, but I'll point out some important ones real briefly. Extrude we're used to, that's how you can, that's how we'll usually turn two-dimensional shapes into three-dimensional objects or cut away pieces of three-dimensional objects. We can also use uh, the revolve tool to do that. I'll show you that in a different video. Same thing with there's sweeps and lofts that we won't use as often, or maybe you won't ever use them at all, but those can be useful. Thicken too. It, a lot of these can be useful, but mo almost all the time we'll pretty much just use extrude. 
and fillet and chamfer let you put nice rounded or chamfered finishes on edges in your part. Draft can put nice angled angled faces on your part. You can also do that while you're extruding, but you can do it after the fact with this draft button too. Rib, probably not used very much, but you can make little supporting ribs in your part. Shell you'll use a lot if you ever want to hollow things out. We remember that one. Hole is actually not that useful for most of the kind of holes you'll want to make because it's meant for like making screw holes and there's special special features in there for picking the size of screw and even the kind of thread and stuff. We're probably not going to want that. Patterns are really important here. You see linear pattern and then there's circular pattern and curve pattern underneath that menu. That's really useful if you have one feature, like one extrusion or one cut, that you want to make lots and lots of copies of. Like say you've cut a hole in a surface and you want to fill that whole surface with like vent holes or something, you can use different kinds of patterns for that. Mirror can be useful too, that's where if you have one half of a part all done and you want the other half to be exactly a mirror image of it so your part's symmetrical, you can use mirror for that. These tools in here we'll mostly not want to use. Some of these types of trans transform we might find are useful and sometimes people making crumple zones like to use the wrap feature. Most of these over here will not really want to use either, although sometimes you might want to make your own extra planes, or you can make helical lines that are useful with the sweep feature, and some, some things like that. Those can be useful. And we're probably not ever going to use sheet metal models for anything on the STEM Explorer. And this button here is kind of special. Those people who are making cool new things to add on to on shape can even add new features and it's possible if you want to learn how to write on shape special feature script code for you to make your own features in theory that it's kind of a big complicated thing that you won't have time to get into but i suppose you can try if you want and of course this search box here will be another Big useful nice friend if you ever want if you ever can't find something like that wrap feature that's kind of hidden away and, or if, even if your window is small and you can't see most of these buttons you can always find any of them with the search box that's really useful over here we have the feature list and right now this shows the origin point and the top front and right planes but every sketch you do and every feature one of these tools. Every feature you make with these tools will always show up here. And I'll make a sketch right now just to show you. Anything in here, generally speaking, you can right click on something and say edit to get right back to where you first drew the drew a sketch or if I extrude this really quickly. You can get back to where you extruded or you know used your feature tool to, to to make your thing 3d and change the way you did that you can always get back and change something you did in here and you can also kind of go back in time with the rollback bar here if i drag this up above where that extrude is it goes back in time to after I drew the circle, but before I made it 3D. And that can be useful sometimes. And it'll also list all the separate solid parts that you have in your model down here, too. This is technically supposed to be one part in this window most of the time, but if you want to, you can make different separate parts in one part studio window. And I don't think that's usually a very good idea, but you can certainly do it, and it'll list all of the separate parts you have down here. And moving over here, we have the view cube, and I showed you how this works in the tissue box cover video. But you can look around at different faces of the model like this. Look at the top side here. 
and rotate it around. That's really nice. And you can pick different isometric, diametric, trimetric. You can even make up your own views and change the way the part looks a little bit here. Turn off edges. All sorts of fun stuff. And this here is the configuration panel. This is mostly advanced stuff, like especially if you're using that feature script code I mentioned before, you might use this. But for the most part, we won't really need to use this feature on the STEM Explorer. And finally, all the way down here, you can have more than one part studio, more than one individual part in a document. We have this lists through the different tabs we have on this tab bar. If you click on that, I'll get rid of it for now. If you click on this plus sign, you can add, most of the time, all we'll work with is part studios and assemblies. You can have multiple part studios, multiple parts in your document, and then put them together into one assembled thing in an assembly. And a feature studio is to make new features with that on shape feature script code I mentioned before. The rest of this material libraries and drawings and folders we won't really need to use. And then I, I will add another part studio in here just to show you. Let's see, I'll turn this into a cube looking part. There, extrude that. And I can switch between these two parts now. And these are in the same document. And I can put them together if I want in this assembly. I'm not going to show you how to do that right now because that needs a whole video of its own. But this is where you'll switch between the different parts in your, in your document. And that's about it. That's the fast guide to the Onshape Part Studio interface.